glory, you deserve the praise. You deserve adoration, mighty warrior, great I am. Great and glorious in all your wondrous works. You will the sick who delivers the oppressed. You are beyond the thoughts of men. You are great, O oh Lord, and there is no other king like you. You are above all the kings, all dominions, all principalities submit to your power and to your glory, Jesus. Take all the glory this night. There is no other father like you. There is no other God like you, Jesus. There is no other God like you. We submit under your glorious presence, under your glorious works. We say you are Lord, Nawabi. There is no other father like you. As we tarry tonight, speak to us, Lord. Touch one soul that has given their life to listen to your word tonight. Heal any man that is sick, that has sacrificed their time to listen to your word. Deliver any oppression, any calamity and any limitations. Deliver men. Set men free from any bondage and any chain. Let this word heal the hearts of men. You said you sent your word and your word has healed us and delivered us from any kind of oppression. Let it be so with your word tonight. And I declare it can never be otherwise. For you have spoken. From eternity to eternity we declare your word is yes and amen in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. God bless you. Uh, we hope you've had a good week. We trust God has kept you safe, sound, and preserved in his might and in his power. Welcome to tonight's fellowship once again. Feel at the feet of Jesus. The Lord is in this place and the Lord is not limited by boundaries. The Lord is not limited by situations. The Lord is not limited by circumstances. Our God is not limited by the nation you are watching us from. Is not limited by any kind of things that limit the thoughts of men. He is a God who is endless and faithful from the time began until now. And we welcome you to tonight's fellowship, Feel at the Feet of Jesus. We are here to learn and build ourselves in our most holy faith. As the Bible says in Jude chapter 1 verse 20, he says, brethren, building your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Number one. Then number two, he says in Acts chapter 20, verse 32, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up, then give you an inheritance amongst them that are sanctified. And therefore it is my prayer that you are being built up in this series, that the Lord may open your eyes to see and to hear from him, and let the Spirit of the Lord touch you from wherever you are listening us from. God bless you. You can share with us where you are listening us from tonight. Even as the Lord ministers to us. I ask that may the Lord keep you patient. And even as you listen to this voice, let there be a turnaround over your life and over your destiny. The Bible says in the book of Psalms that the word of the Lord is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto our paths. Let there be illumination on anything that looked like darkness in your yesterday. May the Lord open your eyes to see clearly in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God keep you. This is Rema Generation. We are here to minister the word of God tonight as the Spirit of the Lord permits us. Now, we had begun a series last week. I don't want to take much time on the things that are totally different from what we have to endeavor in tonight. Uh, we had begun on a series last week, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And last week I was laying a foundation of why we need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. If you missed our last week's series, please you can check out on our wall and, 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 and get acquainted. If you want an audio, there is also a YouTube channel. You can choose to subscribe. This shall be uploaded on the YouTube channel after the Facebook so that it becomes easier for us to access. 
and for them that need an audio there is a number they shall give you you shall you can always request an audio for the same so that you may be built up and also you can encourage one or two people from your area of jurisdiction so that you can also grow together in the might of god now we handled the basis last week and this is just a build up of what we handled last week we handled the various misconceptions about the gifts of the holy spirit and what is needed to be known in this series the objectives and the things that the lord will do throughout this series until we get to part nine of the series and therefore it is my prayer that the lord builds us up in the very grace that was upon jesus christ that it may be at work inside his word that as he ministers to us tonight we might never remain the same now some of the misconceptions we handled last week we say that the gifts of the holy spirit do not guarantee maturity the fact that you are walking in a certain gift does not mean you are spiritually mature and, and 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 it is also important that we note this even as we begin on the on the first gift of the spirit tonight it is good that we note that the gifts of the holy spirit are not nine paul theologically classifies them to nine but they are not limited to nine there are so many gifts of the holy spirit they are not limited to nine they are just theologically classified to nine but they are not nine so that we don't say because i don't have this gift i'm not gifted number two i want also to clarify a misconception that you there are people who are working in more than one gift and there are people who have come up with a doctrine to say that the fact that you are working in more than one gift it means it does not come from the holy spirit of god no that is not true Paul himself walked in the nine gifts of the Spirit. You can walk in more than one gift of the Spirit. You can walk in the word of knowledge. You can walk in the gift of wisdom. You can walk in the gift of interpretation of tongues. You can walk in the gift of prophecy. You can walk in the gift of governance and so many other gifts. It doesn't mean because you are working in the gift of interpretation of tongues, you cannot prophesy. So I beg to take us to a journey tonight of what the Spirit of God wants us to learn. And after this meeting, you shall thank God that you attended this fellowship tonight. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 1. Allow me to use the Bible. This is a very critical topic. And, uh, and I don't want to misguide us because any misguidance on this topic shall lead us to error. Therefore, I beg, I beg to take us thoroughly through the word of God so that your faith may not be built on the voice of Elvis, but your voice might be built on the word of God, which is the solid foundation. Bible records that he says upon Peter, he says, upon you I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall never prevail against it. The word there upon, upon Peter, I shall build my church, does not mean upon the name. It means upon the revelation that Peter revealed that Christ is Lord. I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall never prevail against it and therefore it is good that you be built up on the word of god not upon your pastor's word not upon your your apostle's word but upon the word of god such that when anything comes it does not sway you away from the word of god a parable is given that a house was built one was built on a rock and another one was built on sand and when the storms came he says the the house built on sand came down trembling but the house that was built on the rock stood firm it matters what you are built upon if you are built upon the stories of men if you are built upon your pastors or your bishop's word that is contrary to the word of god i assure you when the storms of life come you shall never stand those storms and therefore i beg to take us to a journey tonight that the lord may open up our eyes Theologically, you know that the gifts of the Spirit did not begin in the New Testament. The gifts of the Holy Spirit began right away from the Old Testament. There were men like Saul in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 10, from verse 1, that walked in the gifts of prophecy. There are men that walked in the gifts of discernment in the Old Testament. But none of them had the ability to explain what these gifts are. It is Apostle Paul that was given the grace to have an ability to describe and to explain theologically speaking how the gifts are in operation among the believers and even the disciples saw jesus working in the gifts but none of them had an understanding a perfect understanding 
of the gifts of the Spirit. It was Apostle Paul that was given the mandate to walk and to understand and to teach these gifts categorically according to what the Spirit of God revealed to him according to scripture and to train up the, the church at Corinth on how they should be built up on the gifts of the Spirit. Now, the end, the end result of teaching the gifts of the Spirit is, is, is totally described in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. It says that let everything be done in order. In other words, the gifts of the Spirit has not called men to walk in disorder has not called men to walk in rebellion, has not called men to walk in anarchy, thinking that you are more anointed than your pastor, thinking that you are more anointed than your leader, the gifts of the Spirit must be administered by faith and in order. If there is no order in administration of the gift, it is as good as though the gift were not administered to us. The Bible records Jesus speaking. He says, a man led of the Spirit is like wind nobody knows where he's coming from and where he's heading to now the fact that the word of god describes a man of the spirit in that dimension does not mean that that man of the spirit should be disorderly every man walking in any gift of the spirit there must be order if there is no order it is not of god there must be order and unity for the gifting of the spirit to be validated to be of the spirit of god now it is also good to understand that there are various gifts of the spirit that the demons and the principalities have masqueraded to walk in that are not of God. The Bible teaches and says that the angel, the, 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 the devil masquerades as an angel of light. Now we know that an angel according to revelation means a pastor, a shepherd. That is why when it was being written, the letters he says, writing to the angel in Philadelphia. In, in other words, a shepherd in Philadelphia. Now the angel was, was in reference to a shepherd. Now it says the, the devil has masqueraded as an angel of light. That should be Second Corinthians, I believe, chapter 4. He says he has masqueraded as an angel of light. That is to say the devil can also walk in similitudes of light. Now it is good we understand that there are also things that have been carried around that have been made to look like gifts of the Spirit, yet they are not gifts of the Spirit. In some mission, I remember we went and there was a man who was bubbling up in tongues, only to discover as we are praying for that man to realize that that gift of speaking in tongues was not of God. It had been demon inspired. Bible says in the book of 1 Timothy, he says that there are things called demon-inspired revelations. Passion translation. He says there are things called demon-inspired revelations. There are people also prophesy under the power of Lucifer. There are men who speak in tongues under the power of Lucifer. There are men who can tell you words of knowledge, but it is under the power of the demonic. It is good we understand. Very important that you understand. Not every gift you see has come from God. There must be a discerning enough to know this one is of God and this one is not of God. You remember the lady that was walking and saying these people are servants of God during the times of the apostle, only for the apostle to rebuke that lady and say this one is not of God. In other words, there are gifts that are given to men, yet they are not given by God. Very important to understand these things. Now, the gifts of the Spirit did not start from 1 Corinthians. The gifts of the Spirit did not start from Acts of the Apostles. The gifts of the Spirit have been there since time because the Holy Spirit has been there since the creation of the earth. Now, the Spirit of God gave gifts to men. There are people who worked in various gifts in the Old Testament, but none of them had the ability to describe these gifts in all sincerity and accuracy the way Apostle Paul describes them in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. That is why our verse of emphasis in this series shall be 1 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 1. I beg also to say this before we handle that scripture. Romans chapter 1 verse 11, he says, I long and I desire to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts to the end that you may be established. That is to tell you that the gifts of the Spirit have an ability to stabilize. 
whenever you are working in a gift whenever the lord has given you a gift there is an ability to stabilize in the house of god so gifts are important as far much as there are very many controversies concerning the gifts of the spirit but gifts are important gifts validate that god is not a lie and god is not a man the gifts of the spirit validate that there is still a god in heaven and there is still god that works through men and through his church gifts are important in the body of christ first corinthians chapter 12 verse 1 journey with me as the spirit of god permits us he says now concerning spiritual gifts now realize by the time by the time apostle paul was speaking this scripture was writing this letter to the church in corinth it was the very apex it was at the point where the church of corinth was experiencing a certain move of god theologically speaking just laying a basis of this scripture it was at the time when apostle paul was laying a there was a lot of of, of manifestation of the spiritual gifts in the church at corinth and the church at corinth there were people who were prophesying men that were speaking in tongues and to the point that there were people who were using these gifts yet they didn't have an understanding of what was happening through them and in them so when Apostle Paul was writing this letter it was at the apex of the church at Corinth the point where the, the church at Corinth was experiencing a subtle move of God a move of God that came with a lot of gifts manifestation of miracles manifestation of the gifts of prophecy tangible works of the spirit of God in that church and when apostle paul saw this thing he realized that the men were working in a lot of zeal but there was no knowledge realize whenever there is zeal and there is no knowledge people perish the fact that you are zealous for the matters of the kingdom is not enough there must be a requisite knowledge that governs a zealous man to give him compass and direction to work in the very mandate that the Lord has placed in his life in that zeal and therefore in Apostle Paul saw a lot of zeal in the church at Corinth he decided to bring up the knowledge about the gifts of the Spirit so that they might be there there might never be disorder in that church because disorder had already been noticed realize whenever the gifts of the Lord start to work in men in the church and there is no knowledge to govern those gifts there shall be disorder this order is a product of the lack of knowledge in the zealous things for God. Now, Apostle Paul, while he's, he's narrating these things, he's speaking with a knowledge and a perspective that yes, the church of Corinth is growing, the church of Corinth has gifts, the church of Corinth has a certain dimension of the spirit that they're experiencing, except that, that there is lack of knowledge about the gifts of the spirit. Follow me closely. Now, writing it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be ignorant. Hold on there. In other words, there are people who have gifts, but they are ignorant. The fact that you are moving in a gift does not mean you are perfect. There are people who are working in certain gifts of the Spirit, yet they are, they are, they are carried in a lot of ignorance. There is no knowledge. You, you have never seen in a church where people go to prophesy. The man of God just stands and says, you stand prophesy. Another man stands and prophesy. And they prophesy the entire service, 365 and a quarter. There is no word, no growth. Anywhere there is no word, there is no stability. And wherever there is no stability, there is always ignorance. Ignorance is a product of the lack of knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, he says, my people, realize the lord is calling them my people they are born again they perish for the lack of knowledge now paul speaking he says these men are working in gifts but they are very ignorant in other words they have no knowledge let me jump that let me read from verse 4. he says there are various diversities of gifts now let me explain that for a moment we are just building up on something then we we we, we sky up now it says there are various diversities there are various diversities of gifts i want you to understand that scripture the meaning of the word there are various diversities in other words what apostle paul was meaning is that there are not just nine gifts 
there are various diverse gifts of the spirit so this is the reason why you will see people saying now in, in, in the times of the generals you remember the 1940s 1950s right away from the Azusa Street Revival Azusa Street Revival and the many revivals that came there were men like like Maria there are women like Maria would do what eat and men like Alexander the way they collided simply because Maria would what eat was experiencing a dimension in the spirit that Alexander the way had never seen now listen to me child of God the fact that God is moving in a different way today from the way he moved yesterday does not mean it is not God moving Apostle Paul says there are diversities in other words there are very many gifts then he says according to the Spirit of God this is to tell you one thing that you will see various gifts that are not written in the Word of God but it is still the Spirit of God that is moving now when Alexander the realized that Maria would what Ita was working in a gift that had never been experienced but him now re remember that Alexander the way was a man who was really anointed he saw men walking out of wheelchairs he saw the dead rising in fact he, he built up Zion City in Illinois in Illinois in USA now when this man was working in those gifts he thought that the Spirit of God was only limited by the gifts he was working in when Maria would what it has started experiencing the move of God in her meetings recorded in the books he says there were people who would fall in a trance and they would they would freeze for hours literally they would freeze for hours then rise up after those hours and they had vision of angels and literally all of them in that room had the same vision if you give someone a mic they say i had this i saw this and when you realize all of them they were speaking of the same thing they were frozen in a certain dimension for so long now when Alexander the way realized and was told about a certain move of God through a woman, she's, Alexander the way said that one can never be God. Now the Lord was using Maria with one eater. But Alexander the way had never experienced that move and, 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 and finalized and said that one can never be God. There are certain gifts of God that are not written in scripture that have never been seen before but the Holy Spirit is able to work inside of men through those gifts. For instance, if you see a man rolling on the floor, then you keep asking, where is it written in the word of God that men shall speak in tongues until they roll on the floor? I never saw Apostle Paul. You see, that is the reason with religious men. It is the reason why after Bible school, there is always a school of the Spirit. Because if you are limited to Scripture, I've never experienced the Spirit of God. You shall never experience the current move of God per season and per time. Now Apostle Paul speaking, he says there are various diversities of gifts. Various diversities of gifts. That is to say, there are gifts that are not written here but are still experienced in the body of Christ. Men like Smith Wigglesworth, they will pick dead bodies from the mortuary. Then they, they, they slap the dead body they punch that dead body to the extent that as they kept on punching the dead body, the dead rise. Now, that is to tell you in the scripture, nowhere has it been written that you shall punch people. Then they shall rise up from the dead. But then the Spirit of God moved through Smith Wigglesworth in that dimension, such that he rose up even the dead in the dimension of punching them. There are men like, 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 like Papa Ihegin. They will step in a meeting after ministration they start laughing and as they start laughing the spirit of god moves in that meeting and men start being healed the oppressed start being delivered simply by a laughter it was a gift that was given to ihegin it was a diversity of the gift now the fact that you see a man walking in a gift that you have never walked in does not mean that man is not led by the spirit of god it is good to clarify that before you move on because there are so many gifts that are, are not written in scripture, but are currently at work in the body of Christ. Now, he says, there are diversities of gifts, but he says, but of the same spirit. That is to tell you that if you see a man screaming, screaming in the house of God, 
simply because it is not written in scripture that it is a gift does not mean that it is not being used of God. We should accommodate and grow in that diversity such that whosoever and in the in the dimension the spirit of god is moving we can still accommodate it inside of us now this one is not to encourage this order in the house of god and not to encourage the various things i have seen that are not godly there are things that happen in the house of god that your spirit bears witness with the spirit of god that this one can only be of god i've seen a certain meme going around i beg also to address this that 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 where did you see apostle paul standing in a congregation and then calling people and saying uh, uh, i saw you you have you have a certain tumor in your stomach you have a certain dimension and this and this where did you see apostle paul doing that now simply because apostle paul did not do it does not mean it is not a dimension in the spirit of god please bear up bear up and open up your spirit because any man that is not a prayerful man you shall never know the various dimensions of the Spirit of God. He says there are various diversities of the gifts of God. Now he says there are various diversities of gifts, but the Spirit is the same. Verse 5, let me rush. There are differences of ministries. There are differences of ministries. There are differences of ministries. Now that is to tell you that simply because you saw you saw Apostle Paul healing somebody by, by, by giving them a cloth. Does not mean when you see another man hugging a person and that person becomes healed. It is not the Spirit of God. He says there are diversities of ministries. There are differences in ministries. In other words, the gift of healing can be administered. I can give you water to drink and become well. I can lay hands on you and you become well. I can look at you and rebuke the Spirit and you become well. And other words, I can tell you, go home, you are well. Yet it is still the same spirit, and the person becomes well. He says there are differences in ministries. That is what is meant by that scripture, that there are differences in ministries. In other words, today I can prophesy by sitting. Tomorrow I can prophesy by standing. The other day I can prophesy when I wake up from my bed. And another day I can simply be walking and joke. Yet that joke is a prophecy. It doesn't mean that it is not God moving. He says there are differences in ministries. Let me rush up. He says, but the same Lord. Then he says, and there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. Now he says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one of the prophet of all. Now, the gifts are not for you. The gifts are not just for your family. The gifts are for the body of Christ. He says it has been given for the profiting of all. Not of some, of all. Not of yourself, of all. So you can be sick, yet lay your hand on a man who is sick. And that person gets well, yet you are sick. You can speak to someone about their direction into their destiny. Yet you are still struggling with your own direction for your destiny. It doesn't mean it is a different God. It is simply because when God gifts you, it is not for you, it is for men. It is the very reason, it is the very reason why even when Elisha was dead, the gifting was still with erect men. Why? Because that gifting was not just for profiting of the dead, was for profiting of any man. So the gifts are for the profiting of all. Rushing up so that I wind up here. Now, he says, for to one is given the word of wisdom, gift number one, through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing. Notice that it's not a gift of healing. It is gifts. We shall land on that when you get there. Gifts of healing by the same Spirit. He says to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kind of tongues and to another the interpretation of tongues but one and the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills now let's talk theologically speaking the gifts of the spirit are theologically classified into three number one classification of gifts they are called revelatory gifts gifts of revelation 
under revelatory gifts, of course, we have three gifts. Number one is the word of wisdom. Notice it is the word of wisdom. Number two, it is the word of knowledge. Number three, it is the discerning of spirits. Those are revelatory gifts. Number one, I repeat, the gift of the word of wisdom. Number two, the gift of the word of knowledge. Number three, the gift of the discerning of spirits. The second classification of the gifts of the spirit is utterance gifts. Other words, in other words, are, are, are also said gifts of utterance. Under the classification of the gifts of utterance, number one, we have the gifts of speaking in tongues. Number two, the gifts of interpretation of tongues. Number three, we have the gifts of prophecy. These three gifts fall under the gifts of utterance. The third classification of the gifts of the Spirit, theologically speaking, are called the power gifts. Under this classification, number one, we have the gifts of the working of miracles. Number two, we have the gifts of healing. Number three, we have the gift of faith. These three fall under the power gifts. I repeat, number one, working of miracles. Number two, gift of healing. Number three, the gift of faith. Now, the nine gifts theologically classified by Paul are classified into three. Revelatory gifts, utterance gifts, and power gifts. Follow me closely because there's somewhere we are heading. Now, under revelatory gifts, those gifts make you think like Christ. Revelatory gifts make you think like Christ. Number two, utterance gift make you speak like Christ. Number three, the power gifts make you act like Christ. I repeat again, revelatory gifts make you think like Christ. Number two, utterance gift make you speak like Christ. Number three, power gifts make you work like Christ. All these gifts are important for the body of Christ. There is no gift that is more important than the other. All these gifts are important for the body of Christ. Now let me start from liberatory gifts. Uh, we shall keep on doing this until we get to part nine. By part nine, I tell you, the Lord will have opened up your eyes you will be seeing things in different dimensions. I start with revelatory gifts. I'm starting with the gift of wisdom. The gift of wisdom. Now, let me just describe what the gift of wisdom is. Then give a, a brief explanation, then we wind up. I shall just teach tonight about the gift of wisdom. Then next week we shall wind up on the revelatory gifts. Now, listen. The gift of wisdom. Number one explanation to this gift is that the gift of wisdom makes you apply the word of God in your real life circumstance. It is a gift that enables you to apply the word of God and the knowledge in that word in your life on earth. Now this gift, it is, it is, it is amazing that if you are not a man and a woman who studies the word of God, this gift shall be very difficult to be at work in your life because this gift is totally dependent on your knowledge in the word of God. Then after the word of God, you are able to demonstrate it inside your real life experience. Bible says in the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, it says, permit the word of God to dwell in you richly in all wisdom. This is to tell you that the word of God must dwell in you. Then that ability of that word of God to dwell in you richly and to reproduce it is called wisdom. He says, permit that word to dwell in you richly in all wisdom. There must be an ability to study the word, then that word to dwell in your heart, then to replicate that word in wisdom in your real life experience. If you can never replicate the word of God in wisdom to your real life experience, it is not beneficial to you as a man. I have seen men and I have seen women walking in very many gifts but lacking wisdom. Notice that every gift, every other gift, the eight gifts that have been spoken, the power gifts, 
the utterance gift and the remaining two gifts of revelation are pivotal very pivotal to the gift of wisdom all of them are totally dependent on the gift of wisdom if you want to work miracles you must have the gift of wisdom speaking in tongues there must be the gift of wisdom gift of knowledge there must be the gift of wisdom any man that lacks the gift of wisdom will be irrelevant on earth the gift of wisdom is what makes you relevant on earth there are so many people that have crammed scripture so many people that have read the word of God but they have no capacity to replicate that word in their real life experience on earth the second description of the gift of wisdom this gift has an ability to help you solve real life challenges that are beyond your age beyond your education and beyond your qualification if you want to rule in this life I have learned through men that nobody listens to you if you are speaking in the same domain as them. This gift of wisdom has an ability for you to administer challenges irregardless of age, irregardless of education status, and irregardless of your qualification. I've, I've recently been handling marriage issues and handling things that are even beyond my age and sometimes I look back and say, God, how can I even handle this thing? And the Lord said, that one was not you. It is the Spirit of God working through you, through the gift of wisdom. The gift of wisdom has an ability. I tell you, if you carry the gift of wisdom, you can stand before men that are above your age and speak a wisdom that, that they have never had. This gift of wisdom has an ability to transverse. Even in the education system, you have never studied. You are there, you are saying, man of God, I have never gone to university. How can I preach before university students? I am here to assure you, if you carry the gift of wisdom, this ability has an ability to make you stand before any kind of man, irregardless of their profession, irregardless of their education system. The gift of wisdom is always at work to solve all those real life challenges inside men. The reason why men make wrong decisions in life is because they lack the gift of wisdom. The reason why men close the open doors that had been opened up to them by their mouth is because of the lack of the gift of wisdom. The reason why you will hear a prayer warrior speaking things that do not look like prayer is because they lack the gift of wisdom. The gift of wisdom sharpens and discerns the intents of the heart. It is the very reason why Solomon is called a man of wisdom. Why? Because in his first instance, when the women came before him, the first woman had slept on the child. The other one was crying and saying, this is my child. The other one is saying, this one is my child. And when Solomon saw that thing, the Bible records that he picked up a sword, which is the word of God. The word of God that is very pivotal to the gift of wisdom. And he says that word of God was able to discern the intents of the two women. Then he saw the woman and said, now you pick your child and go. Why? Because the word of God, as it is written, in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, it says it is the discerner of the intents of the heart. That word of God is represented by the sword of the spirit. According to Ephesians chapter 6, it says the word of God is the sword of the spirit. That word is what Solomon used and discerned the intents of the heart. If you, are, if you are a man and you have made wrong decisions in your life, you need the gift of wisdom. The gift of wisdom is needed by every person. You need the gift of wisdom to make career objectives. You need the gift of wisdom for marriage. You need the gift of wisdom to choose the business opportunity to dwell in. You need the gift of wisdom to choose your friends. You need the gift of wisdom to choose the church you are supposed to be in part time. You need the gift of wisdom to discern where you are supposed to go. The gift of wisdom. Very important. One way in which Jesus demonstrated the gift of wisdom, then you wind up. John chapter 8, he says, he says there was a woman who was caught up in adultery. And when they caught that woman in adultery, they say, they shall bring that woman to Jesus. And they brought that woman to Jesus Christ. When they got to Jesus Christ, they asked Jesus, what shall we do with this woman? Now notice, that one was not the gift of the word of knowledge. Uh -huh. Not the gift of the discerning of spirits. That was the gift of wisdom. When Jesus looked at them like this, he says he knelt and started to draw on the floor. 
the gift of wisdom will teach you to be silent when you are supposed to speak. There are so many people who keep speaking non-stop everywhere you think you are supposed to speak and you keep telling people that is my personality and yet the things you are speaking, if you realize you have a personality of speaking, read the word of God the more. Because it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. There are days you need to be silent. Not everything you comment, not everything you speak, not everything you have to say. If you realize you have a personality, I repeat again, I repeat, I love you, but we shall talk after this meeting. If you have a personality of too much speaking, too much talking, you want to talk anyhow, anywhere, please read the word of God the more, such that whenever you want to speak, what comes out of your mouth is able to edify. There are people, there are prayer warriors, there are people who are ashes. You, you get outside there and you listen to their speech and you ask yourself, is this man really born again? Those men lack the gift of wisdom. The gift of wisdom will tell you when to speak, when not to speak, how to speak it, and who to speak it to. We don't speak everything to anyone. It is the very reason why other people have 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 have, have damnation, uh, have caused their, their visions and their purposes to be doomed. Why? Because they spoke their visions and their purposes to people who are not supposed to hear. And because they didn't want, they didn't have the gift of wisdom, they ended up losing the vision that the Lord placed in them. Why? Because there was no wisdom to discern whom to talk to and whom not to talk to. The gift of wisdom will teach you whom to speak to and whom not to speak to. Don't just speak any holy, anywhere, in any manner you feel like. And, 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 and I beg to say this, if you are a man or a woman or any person, especially those in, those in Rema, make sure your speech looks like your heart. Out of that abundance, the mouth speaks. Wisdom is the ability to discern how to speak, when to speak, who to speak to, and at what time to speak it. But don't just speak any holy any time. There is a manifest, there is a specific time for speaking something. Not every time. They, uh, if, if women were like that, they kept on speaking. There were very many. You know, it is the very reason. It is the very reason why I have seen some certain men losing their wives or losing their girlfriends. Why? Because you picked up your <laughs> hallelujah, picked up your girlfriend, picked up your fiance went and spoke about that person to another man. Then the next day you realize the other man is the one. The, the lady is, is not speaking the call simply because the other man has decided to take. Those things are the they are, they are fruits of the lack of the gift of wisdom. Very many people have visions to carry, purposes to carry, but they spoke those things early before God had permitted them to speak. It is the very reason why the angel had to shut up the mouth of Zechariah before John the Baptist was born. Why? Because there are days when your mouth must be shut. Proverbs teaches and says, out of many words, there can never lack sin. If you keep on speaking, 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 and everything you are speaking about, there's no scripture in it, no relevance, nothing out of it, you are lacking wisdom. Wisdom has an ability to teach you. Hey, let me not dwell there. You might hate me for the rest of your life, but I'm helping you. Now, he says when they brought the woman caught in adultery, number one, Jesus did not speak. He knelt. So there are people who will come and address you on things. And you will tell them, no, let me go and pray about it first before I come and address it. You don't have to answer everything. Every time they come, they say, I want you to do this. You say, yes, 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 yes. Every opportunity you feel you are the one who is supposed to enter that opportunity. You are a lady. Every man that comes, you feel you are the one who needs all men in the world. You are a man. You see any scar, you think you are the one who needs all of them in the world. You see, those things are characteristics that you are born again. That there is no gift of wisdom. You cannot, you cannot apply the very word in your heart, in your real life experience. Now, Jesus knelt drill on the ground then woke up and said the word and that word scattered every man regardless of age regardless of their profession regardless of their degree regardless of their pastoral doctorate that word scattered all of them and they left what did Jesus say? He says if you are a man and you have never seen me the first one to cast a stone that one 
was not a mere speech. It was not a speech that came from a man. It was a gift of wisdom at work. There are days you will stand before men and they don't need to hear words. They need to hear a word. There are people who have stood before open doors and those doors shut simply because of how they spoke. Not because they are bad people. Simply because of how they spoke. The gift of wisdom is a trainer. It teaches you what to speak and at what time to speak it and to whom to speak to. You are not just seated and saying, uh, because I am anointed, the Spirit of God will take charge over me. I shall just be speaking well. That gift must be at work. Now, there are people who are talking of the apostolic mandate. No, the, 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 the periphery, the climax, the, the, the cornerstone of any apostolic mandate is not even just miracles, not just prophecy, not just words of knowledge. Is this gift called the gift of wisdom. Because the apostolic office is first an office of governance before it is an office of spiritual gifts. Now, if you are if you are working the apostolic gift, you must have the gift of wisdom. Why? Because it is important in governance. So there are so many people that think because I'm doing this, because I'm in the house of God, the gift of wisdom is already at work. And you see, eh, the Bible teaches us very well in the book of James, chapter one. If any man lacks wisdom, now the first point of receiving the gift of wisdom is first acknowledging I don't have it. Don't pretend and say I have it, I have it. No, you must first acknowledge it is true. I don't have that gift. I want it. He says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Then after, after the place of acknowledging that they don't have the gift of wisdom, then ask. You don't ask yet you have not acknowledged. You must acknowledge this area of life I don't have wisdom. This area of life I don't have wisdom. Tonight, eh, may the Lord, may the Lord open your eyes to see the mistakes you made due to lack of the gift of wisdom. There are some people that entered marriages. They did, they entered those marriages because they lacked the gift of wisdom. There are some people who lost friends simply because they lack the gift of wisdom to keep those friends. At the same time, there are some people who are keeping friends. And those friends are the reason why they are not progressing. The reason why they are still around is because of the lack of the gift of wisdom. There are some people who have done business, who are in opportunities they are not supposed to be in, simply because they lacked the gift of wisdom. The gift of wisdom is important. There are people like Lot. You do not need to work with them. The Bible says that the moment Lot left Abraham, the Lord told Abraham, turn to the north, look there and says, as far as you can see, I shall give it to us your inheritance. There are days you need to have the gift of wisdom to know at what time I should have a certain friend and at what time is this friendship becoming irrelevant. It is not because those people are bad. It is just to the point that the, 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 the friendship is not necessary to the point where you are heading to. The gift of wisdom, a very important gift on any man and on any woman. If you want to progress, you see, there are so many people who are rotating around the same mountain because they are lacking wisdom. There are so many people that are not moving forward because they are lacking wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Proverbs says, now see, after Jesus had said that, all those people scattered and went. Then he told the woman, go and sin no more. There are days when you will stand before people that have come to get something from you. Just for you to say a word that shall be used against you. The only reason why you shall not say that word is because of the gift of wisdom. Some of the people that are watching me, the Lord shall be taking you to TV stations. The Lord shall be taking you to various media platforms to stand and speak about something. And that shall be the, the, the reason why you shall be standing in that platform every year is because of the gift of wisdom. Because there are days when they will ask you a certain question. You only need the gift of wisdom to answer that question. The gift of wisdom is important. So many people have trivialized this gift, yet they don't know that this is one of the most important gifts for any believer. For any believer. You remember when, the, when Lucifer appeared before Jesus, Luke chapter 4, 
told him it is written. In other words, there are people who might look good. They might even come and tell you it is written. Yet the Lord says, mm, that one, mm, no. Why? Because the gift of wisdom is still at work. Gift of wisdom makes you to make correct decisions at specific seasons. There are challenges you will be able to solve simply because you have the gift of wisdom. There are places you will be able to stand simply because you have the gift of wisdom. The gift of wisdom, very relevant for your well-being. Gift of wisdom is needed. There are days when your husband shall come or your wife shall come and say a word and you feel like answering a thousand words. Then the Spirit of God tells you, shh, shut up. It's the gift of wisdom. There are days you shall look at somebody like this and, 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 and you see, whenever you become a public figure, be prepared for public insult. Uh -uh. I repeat it again, you didn't hear. If you are becoming a public figure, be prepared for public insult. The reason why you are not facing public insult is because you are still private. The moment the Lord shall usher you to the public like this, Eh? and you don't have the gift of wisdom you will think every insult that comes you must respond how many how many things have i had people speaking against me other people saying uh man of god has done this other people keep neglecting and talking evil about everything i do and other people even carry rumors and spread it abroad none of them have I stood and said i am answering you and come and condemn why there are days when the Spirit of God will tell you there's no need. I'm speaking to some people. There are people who have spoken evil concerning your life. People have plotted evil. People have insulted you. They have carried words that are not even true concerning your life. And you are feeling like I should just go and address those people once and for all. The Spirit of God is saying tonight, let the gift of wisdom work inside of you. You don't need to answer them. Be silent. Listen. Anything that is not true will never smell for long. Anything that is never true will never smell for long. If you are wearing a white dress and people keep throwing mud at that dress, you don't need to wrap the white dress. Stand. Let the wind blow over the mud. It shall dry up and fall off. You don't need to address every man and every woman that has spoken evil concerning your life there are days you need to be silent you need to be silent silence is also a voice there are days you feel like answering people there are days people speak evil concerning you and you feel like carrying carrying a stick or just going to slap them and carry them and beat them around and say who told you that then the spirit of god is saying tonight because of the gift of wisdom that is releasing in your life. Be silent. There is no need to address them. Live your life. It shall fall off. The insults, the shame shall fall off. Not every time you need to address those people. Let them think as far much as they want to think. The Lord will fight for you. Finally, when Jesus was standing before the Sanhedrin council, they told him that even they see a blind man, can you open the, her, his eyes? And they even told him that you said you are the king of the Jews. Prove yourself. Jesus looked at them, even to the point where he was able to prove a point. He looked at them and was silent. Silence is a characteristic of a gift of wisdom. There are days when you will stand before people and you have all answers to answer. Then the gift of wisdom inside of you will say, be silent. Please, not, do not be uttering things anyhow, simply because you have an answer. Simply because you have an answer does not mean you should answer everything that has come to question you. Every question has not come for an answer. There are some questions that have come for your silence. Your silence is a better answer than your speech. The gift of wisdom will teach you that. There are days you will stand and answer, but there are days you will stand and be silent. Why? Because the silence is more audible than your voice. There are days when your silence is more vocal than your vocals. 
there are, there are days when your silence carries more vocabulary than your English. There are days when your silence is louder than any home speaker around. When that silence knocks at your window, please be silent. Say yes. Think whatsoever you want to think. My God will fight for me. There are days when you do not need to speak. It is called wisdom. There are days when you speak. It is your speech that shall make you look foolish. There are days you look at people and be silent. Let me give this testimony. There's a day I went to minister somewhere and people are talking to me and I was just silent. I was just silent. And people say, this man is the one you invited to minister. This one has nothing to do in this place. He cannot minister, does not have any authority. I've listened to him. The way he's speaking does not look like a minister. And there are days when you look at men like this and wisdom tells you, don't prove a point. Be silent. Some of us want to prove points. You want to prove points. Please, eh? leave that place of proving a point. The gift of wisdom has called you to the place of never trying to prove yourself to be true. The gift of wisdom will always speak for you. And whenever, whenever I see things like that, people undermining us because we are young, because we have not spoken before them at any point, and before, because when we speak, we don't look like it, I say, God, thank you, because in such circumstances is when you shall reveal yourself. There are days you will go to minister, I'm speaking to ministers as well, and people ignore you and neglect you. It doesn't make you less anointed. Never prove a point. Do not stand on the altar and try to prove points. No. Proving points does not account to anything. The gift of wisdom will teach you when to speak and when not to speak. He says, and Jesus was silent. And Jesus, the man who all had all answers for the earth, the man who created the earth and everything in it, had answers to answer any man, was silent. There are days when you need to be silent. Let your silence be an answer. I'm speaking to somebody who is listening to me. There are people who have, who have caused mud all around you, have spoken evil, they have made you look shameful, and even at some point, when you go before people, you don't have the courage anymore to speak. And tonight you are feeling like, I can just go and address that person, slap them, and tell them to the face, that they have nothing to do with me and just abuse them and leave. The Spirit of God is saying tonight, the gift of wisdom teaches you to be silent. Let them speak. Let them utter. Let them do what they want to do. The gift of wisdom, let it be at work in you. Be silent. The Lord will fight for you. He's called a God of vengeance. Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, it says, And Paul prayed for the Ephesian church to be filled with the spirit of wisdom and the knowledge of his will. There are two ways of receiving the gift of wisdom. Number one, to be a Bible addict. Number two, to pray for the gift of wisdom to be at work in you. Now can I pray for you? Lay your hands on the screen wherever you are. Just close your eyes. Lift up your hand. Tell the Lord, fill me up with the gift of wisdom. I have made maximum errors in my life. I do not have any more time to continue making errors. The errors I have made are enough. Lord, I ask, fill me up with the gift of wisdom. I am tired of making wrong decisions. Wrong decisions. I want to make the right decisions. He says, and the spirit of truth, he shall guide you into all truth. First John chapter 2 verse 27, he says, you need no one to teach you because the Spirit of God shall teach you on all things. Tell the Lord, Lord, let the gift of wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, to be at work in me. I no longer want to walk in ignorance. I no longer want to walk according to my standards. I want to walk according to the spirit of wisdom. Father, Lord, fill me up. Fill me up with the spirit of wisdom. Fill me up with the spirit of wisdom. In the name of Jesus, fill me up with the spirit of wisdom. In the name of Jesus, I release the gift of wisdom upon your people. I release the gift of wisdom upon that man. 
upon that woman. Fill them up by God again with the gift of wisdom. In the name of Jesus, may they never fall to the traps of the enemy. May they make the right decisions because the gift of wisdom is always at work inside of them. Teach them when to be silent and when to speak. In the name of Jesus. I release the gift of wisdom upon your life. I release the gift of wisdom upon your life. Them that are still at a crossword and asking God, which way should I take? I release the gift of wisdom. I impart you with the gift of wisdom in the name of Jesus. May the gift of wisdom be at work inside of you. May the gift of wisdom teach you. May the gift of wisdom train you. May the gift of wisdom equip you in the name of Jesus. May the gift of wisdom give you the direction you are supposed to take in the name of Jesus. I release the gift of wisdom upon that family. I release the gift of wisdom upon that business. I release the gift of wisdom upon that marriage. I release the gift of wisdom upon that ministry. I release the gift of wisdom upon that assignment in the name of Jesus. I release the gift of wisdom upon that career in the name of Jesus. I release the gift of wisdom upon that decision in the name of Jesus. Receive the gift of wisdom in the name of Jesus. May you never make the wrong decisions in your life again. In the name of Jesus, this gift of wisdom shall train you on the life partner to be called. This gift of wisdom shall train you on the right ministry to walk in. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, any man and any woman that was downcast because of what men have spoken against them and they were thinking of taking revenge, I release the gift of wisdom to them. May this gift them teach them to say, to be silent, even whenever they are supposed to speak. In the name of Jesus, I release the gift of wisdom upon that man. I release the gift of wisdom upon that woman. In the name of Jesus, may this gift train them up to walk in the standards of God. In the name of Jesus, take all the praise, my God, and all the honor. For you alone are God. I release your blessings upon your people. I declare, my Father, next Wednesday is greater than this Wednesday. For this week, I bless each one of them. Expand them, anyone that is sick. Heal them by your power in the name of Jesus. Anyone that are going any kind of pressure, any kind of depression, my Father, deliver them and restore them to the original place of peace in the name of Jesus. May the peace of peace guard your heart and your mind in this week in Christ Jesus and everything you endeavor to do may it prosper in the name of Jesus even to as many as have sacrificed concerning this ministry as many as have given their life have given their finances have given their, 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 their assets concerning this Wednesday fellowship I declare may their lives never remain the same bless each one of them expand each one of them in the name of Jesus bless their families bless their children bless them my father as they come in and as they get out bless the works of their hands in the name of Jesus let there be none that shall say I am sick in Zion and let everything my father prosper in their lives I release every blessing that you have ordained upon my life to flow according to the mandate you have placed in me in Jesus' name. According to this sacrifice of the Wednesday Fellowship, may the Lord meet you according to your points of need, and may you never lack. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. See you here next Wednesday. Such a time. May the Lord preserve you and preserve your generation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Fill me up till I.